Today we're going to work on Worksheet 3, which is going to show you how to draw qualitative energy bar graphs in a problem that's called an LOL chart. Well, you can look at this first problem and see the reason that they're called an LOL chart is because the shape of the graphs all together make, guess what, an LOL. <laughs> So we're going to follow the directions that are listed up here, these four steps, and I'm going to show you how to draw the graphs and then to write these energy conservation equations below each problem. So let's start with number 1a. The first thing we have to do according to the directions is to list the objects in the system within the circle of the LOL graph. Now, the system is just the part of the universe that you're interested in making a graph for in terms of its energy content. Since this is the first worksheet that you've done, I'm going to be giving you what the system is in these problems. Um, so you can see here that I tell you that the system in the first problem consists of the cart, the earth, the track, and the spring. So I'm going to write those words inside the system flow circle of the LOL chart. That means that I am drawing the energy amounts of all four of those objects in this problem. And we always want to include the Earth's gravitational field. In step number two, we have to choose our choice of zero height. Typically, that will be a height of zero meters located at the ground. Now we're going to sketch the bar graphs. For position A, the cart is sitting at rest, the spring is compressed, and is getting ready to launch the cart through this loop-de-loop -loop on the roller coaster. So you want to look at the first L in the LOL chart and think to yourself about kinetic energy. I know that's the energy of motion. Gravitational potential energy has to do with the height of an object. And then elastic potential energy has to do with an object that is stretchy like the spring. So in this problem, in position A, the cart is not in motion, so it doesn't have kinetic energy. It's at the ground level, so it has no gravitational potential energy. All the energy of the system right now is located in the spring. So I'm going to draw a bar graph, five bars tall, to represent the total amount of energy in the cart, the earth, the track, and the spring. Now these are qualitative, so if you don't draw your graph five bars tall, that's okay. I just chose to use the entire space that the graph provided. Now what we're going to do is look at position B. In position B, the spring has launched the cart and it is halfway through the loop up at the top. And you can see by these little swoosh marks behind the car that it is in motion. So that means that my car will have some kinetic energy. Because it is above the zero meter ground level, it does have some gravitational potential energy. Once the spring launches the cart, all of that elastic potential energy is transferred to the cart. So the spring at position B is at rest. There's no stored energy in the spring at this point. And there's no thermal or dissipated energy because it tells you in the directions that this is a frictionless track. So I'm going to draw, um, let's see, I think I'm going to draw three bars of kinetic energy and two bars of gravitational potential energy. Again, because it's qualitative, it doesn't really matter how many bars of each you draw. The key thing here is to show conservation of energy. If I have five bars to begin with, I need a total of five bars at the end. That's what's important. Now let's write our qualitative energy conservation equation. You're just going to look at the LOL chart and represent the forms of energy in the graph as an equation. So on the left side of the equation, I have from the first graph all elastic potential energy. And then that energy is converted from the spring to the cart as kinetic and gravitational potential energy. So that transformation converts the five bars of elastic into some kinetic and some gravitational, but those amounts total are equal to one another. All right, let's go on down to problem 1b. In this problem, we are going to repeat the same um, scenario. We have the cart with the 
spring on the track, but this time we're not going to include the spring in the system. So I'm going to write my objects inside the circle. Now when you say that your system does not include the spring, that doesn't mean that the spring does not exist or is not doing anything with the card. All it means is that you are not including the energy from the spring in your graph. So we only want to graph for position A the total energy stored in the cart, the earth, and the track. Well, I'm going to allow zero meters to still be my height at the ground. Since the cart is just sitting there, it does not have kinetic energy. No height means it does not have gravitational potential energy. And since the spring is not in the system, I don't have any elastic potential energy. So there's actually no energy in the system at position A. But then the spring launches the cart, and it looks to me like the cart ends up at the same height and position as it was in problem 1A, and it is still in motion. This is still a frictionless system. So I am going to still give the cart at position B three blocks of kinetic energy and two blocks of gravitational potential energy. And if you look back, that's the exact same scenario I had in problem 1A. It's a frictionless system, so I know that the cart's going to move through the loop without slowing down. When I write my qualitative equation, I'm going to have the EK and the EG on the right side. But this seems to violate the law of conservation of energy. I can't have nothing turning into energy on the right side of the LOL graph and on the LOL equation. So what can we do to solve that? Because we're not breaking the laws of physics, right? Well, if you think back to the last couple of days, one of the things that we talked about when we were talking about kinetic and gravitational potential energy is this idea that work is a change in energy. And that's what we're seeing happen here. The change in energy is we go from no bars of energy initially to five bars of energy in position B. So to represent work, I'm going to draw a really big arrow. I'm going to point the arrow into the system because energy is being added to the system. In other words, if I was removing energy from the system, I would draw the arrow coming out of that circle. Since I've added five bars of energy on my graph, I'm going to represent the five bars of energy on the tip of the arrow, and I'm going to label it as work with a capital W. So then I can say that the work that the spring does on the system adds kinetic and gravitational potential energy to the system. And all work is, remember, is a fancy way to describe a change in energy. All right, let's take a look at 1C. In 1C, we're going to have the same system as in problem 1A. So we're looking at the energy of the cart, the earth, the track, and the spring is back in there now. But this time, the change is that there is friction between the cart and the track. Your graph for position A is going to look the same as it did in 1C. We're going to have no kinetic energy. We're going to have no gravitational energy because the ground is zero meters of height. All the energy of the system is stored at position A in the spring because it's compressed. Now, when the spring transfers its energy to the cart and the cart shoots up through the roller coaster loop, it appears to be at the same height that it was in problem 1A and problem 1B. So I'm still going to draw this as the same amount of gravitational potential energy as before. But think about what the effect of friction is on that roller coaster. The friction between the wheels of the cart and the track caused the cart to slow down. So while I see with these swoosh marks here that the cart is still in motion, rea reality tells us that it's not going to move as fast. If you go back to problem 1A and 1B and look, we gave the cart three bars of energy at position B. So what I'm going to do now is reduce that. I'm going to only have it traveling through the circle with one bar of kinetic energy. The other two bars that I have lost there show up as that thermal or dissipated energy because of friction. 
when you write your qualitative conservation equation, I have elastic potential energy at position A. It is transformed into kinetic energy in the cart at position B and gravitational potential energy for the cart and then the dissipated or thermal energy between the car's wheels and the track at position B. And then lastly, before you're finished, check your conservation of energy bars. We have five bars total to begin. And on the right side, we have five bars total for position B. So there's no work done here. All the energy that's um, transformed from one form into another is internal to the system. All right, next page. We've got one more problem with this scenario with the cart and the spring and the roller coaster track. This situation's the same as problem A. So we're gonna look at the energy of the cart the earth, the track, and the spring. And we're going to look at the same, um, same ground level, zero meters. So initially, we've got all that gravitational, I'm sorry, all that elastic potential energy stored in the spring. When we look at position B, however, the cart is only halfway to the top of the loop where it was in the other problems. So for that reason, at this point, the cart only has half the gravitational potential energy that it did in the other scenarios. We are looking at um, a frictionless system because that's the same as in problem 1A. So I'm not gonna have any dissipated or thermal energy. In position B, the cart is, is holding all of the energy. The spring is at rest, so there's no elastic potential energy. The rest of this energy has to be kinetic. And if you think about it, that makes sense. This is actually more kinetic energy than the previous scenarios had, but when the cart goes into the track, it's going to be moving faster this time because there's no friction, and we're only looking at it halfway up. So when you write your qualitative equation, this one's going to be elastic potential energy at position A is equal to the kinetic energy of the cart plus the gravitational potential energy of the cart. And I see five bars on either side of the LOL chart, so I'm showing conservation of energy. All right, so you have some other problems here to solve, and I'll drop the solutions to these into the module so you can check and see how you're understanding this process. A couple of things I want to point out to you is to look for some clues. You have some clues here in the drawings that tells you something about the height, the Y value for the car at each position. You also have a clue there about the velocity of the object at position A and position B. So let that help you with your gravitational potential and your kinetic energy. You'll also have some clues in the sentences, in the writing. It tells you that the car is moving but comes to a stop, and it tells you what your system should be at some point place in the, the word problem. Um, you've got a clue here that the engine is turned off and the car is in neutral. So that tells you that there's going to be no friction. Nothing to resist the motion of the car rolling up the hill. So use that combination of clues in the writing as well as in the cartoons um, and the scenarios to help you draw those LOL charts. And when you are finished, take a look at the answers that I've left in the module for you. And we can talk about any of the ones you're not sure about next time. But remember, because they're qualitative, the number of bars that you draw for position A and position B don't have to be exactly the same as the ones I give you in the answers. They just simply have to follow the correct trend of increasing or decreasing. And remember to show that work if you're not showing conservation of energy initially. All right, good luck. I'll see you next time.